Today on Expert Showcase, we're going behind the episode with Dawn Westmoreland. She's the author of The Empowered Whistleblower, and we just did a great episode about stop giving away your personal power. Welcome to Behind the Episode. Over here, we've got our awesome interviewer for today, Dr. Mark Kosman, and we have our epic guest, Dawn Westmoreland, right above me. Hey, Mark, I got it. I think that's twice in a row. I think I'm on a roll here with the pointing. I think I finally that's figured right. it out. It's only taking me what? Out where we're, all, we're in our Hollywood squares up here. Exactly. It's only taking me, what, 31 episodes or something crazy like that? But you know, Practice I, makes perfect, man. Practice exactly. makes perfect. Exactly. Um, so why don't we get right into it and uh, take it away, Mark? So, Dawn, let me orient you, and uh, which we've already done, but for the sake of our audience, we'll pretend that we haven't. So, Dawn, you and I are going to have a little bit of a chat here behind the episode. We just shot a, an episode that we're going to show our audience in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, while you and I are talking, Chris is taking some notes that the audience can see on screen, so they're in on, uh, on what he's uh, highlighting. And then uh, after we kind of do our thing a little bit. We're going to flip things over to Chris and let him kind of take his notes and try to find the teachable moments and kind of package and polish this all up for us a little bit and uh, hopefully have some fun, hopefully help people understand how they can be using your example to uh, position themselves a little bit better, do a little bit better with their marketing. Sound good to you? Yeah, it sounds like fun to me. Excellent. Okay. So, Don, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, people are going to hear a little bit of it in the episode in just a couple of minutes, but tell us a little bit about your background, how you came into the world of coaching, and some of what you've been doing as you've been kind of, uh, you know, gaining your own visibility and, and building your coaching career. Well, I'm retired from the Air Force, and I worked uh, in the Air Force uh, 20 years, retired about 11 years ago, and I did a HR. I was a first sergeant, an Air Force recruiter, which cracks people up because I'm more of an extroverted introvert, <laughs> and then I got out, and I earned four degrees. I'm a bit of a nerdy kind of kind of person. <laughs> and. Uh, so um, how did I become a coach? Well, you know, I worked uh, for the Veteran Affairs for five years, and I was a whistleblower, and we ended up settling, uh, you know, about a year ago, and I uh, went through two years of bullying, and so that bullying taught me a lot about myself and my calling. It brought my calling out, and uh, a year ago when I settled with the Veteran Affairs for the horrific two years of bullying, I settled and a week later I started a coach training through IPEC and that was a year ago and now you know I'm out doing radio shows, interviewing, speaking, talking, I'm heading to DC to talk on the Senate panel about reforming the veteran affairs and uh, so that's what got me into coaching is uh, some some ugly gifts but they were gifts nonetheless you know. Yeah. Ugly ugly wrapping paper. <laughs> yeah, I like I like that concept of u ugly wrapping paper that uh, you know if you can dig through the ugly surface there there's good stuff underneath if you can figure out how to convert you know adversity into uh, into something of value and I, I honestly think that's an awful lot about what life is all about is is taking the raw material and creating out of it and sometimes that raw material is just not pretty right so yeah, but it's still a gift. It's still an opportunity, and it's just how you look at it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you may, you may have just said it, and I may just have not hooked my brain onto it. But so how how long ago did you actually launch your your coaching part of your your life here? Because you've had a lot of phases here. So. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I've had like the biggest transformation ever. Yeah, <laughs> I started training uh, coaching with IPEC about a year ago, and I okay. started getting back on my feet. You know. Um, so I had to do a lot of healing mentally and physically too because of the um, experience that I went through. So yeah, the last year I've been doing uh, probably about 30 different radio shows. Been well, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you've been a busy lady if it's only been a year because uh, you, you've been doing a ton of stuff, right? I guess I have been busy and I've been, you know, I've been in the Christian Science Monitor you know, magazine for what I'm doing and my past. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's that's a great segue then to my my question to really highlight that so you know we talk a lot about getting gaining visibility I and mean, obviously if, if people can't find you if they don't know about you then it's pretty hard to uh, to do any kind of business so uh, I heard radio interviews I heard you know some some things in print uh, we can talk obviously there's a book uh, that, that you've got coming out um, what am I missing you've, you've been doing a lot of stuff to kind of get the word out right 
Yeah, well, and I'll be up in Washington, D.C. next uh, Wednesday and Thursday with uh, Concerned Veterans of America. They put me on their team, and uh, there's about 50 of us. We'll be up in D.C. about reforming the, the veteran affairs. I'm a big part of that because my background is in HR. Mm -hmm. And then there will be uh, TV clips and such, and uh, we'll be able to look at that. And they want me to share my whistleblowing story, and I'll be hand-carrying my book up there, too. So I'm getting out there in a big way. Um, I'm very open. I'm very transparent because, you know, that's the only way that people can help is, uh, you know, transparency, you know. Yeah. Yep, it's it's very powerful. Well, you're gonna obviously you're gonna have some great uh, some great footage from that and some great some great backdrops as you're sitting there uh, in Congress and the Capitol and, and all that good stuff. So those are those will be great pieces of raw material, uh, digital assets as uh, as some people like to call them uh, that, that you can use in your marketing. Um, well, and obviously your story. I mean, we, we talk about three things really: visibility, credibility, and authority, right? So, I mean, credibility just kind of oozes out of the story that you're you have to tell here because this is not some academic exercise. I mean, you, you have lived this journey of figuring out how to not lose your your personal power and how to actually gain it in the face of some pretty nasty stuff. It sounds like so. Yeah. Um, authenticity is your friend, right? Uh, Authenticity, but I have to say, academia has helped me because well, yeah. when I was getting my case together, I, I, you know, with 22 years and a master's in HR, you know, I put all of, all the documentation together for the attorney and made his job easier. So that was empowering. Right. You mentioned four degrees, so of course, degrees definitely help with credibility. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's a, it's a placeholder. I mean, people still have to get to know your stuff, but uh, but clearly, having a whole bunch of letters after your name doesn't hurt, right? So. <laughs> oh no, no, not at all. And then, of course, you've got a book coming out, and and uh, you know, we always like to point out, isn't it interesting how the word authority comes from the word author? Uh, so you are you are in the process of publishing the book. You have written the book about uh, you know the empowered whistleblower, and uh, that that is certainly positioning yourself for authority. I mean, so what was the thought thought process behind writing the book? You know. When I was going through the middle of the two years of bullying and, you know, I was just at my wits end. I mean, I ended up in the mental health ward for three days and, you know, it was just like something just popped in my head that, you know, you're supposed to go through this and there's a reason. This is part of your journey. And so I didn't like it one bit. I'm not going to lie. I hated it. I mean, I felt victimized all the way and I had victim right here. And then it just it hit me, you know, you're supposed to go through this. And then it hit me, I'm not going to sign a gag order at the end, which I did not. They tried very much, but I had, you know, so much on my side. And I knew I was going to get out and talk. I knew I was going to speak. And then I knew I was going to write a book about it because um, so much of it got swept under the rug, even when we settled. So, yeah, I knew I knew I would be writing the book. Mm hmm uh, one of the things I hear that I, I really just, you can't avoid feeling it actually with people. There's people who write books and then there's people who write the book they've lived, right? And and, and again, there's there's just an energy to that authenticity of that personal experience that, you know, it's just kind of a palpable thing and, and I think really gives people credibility. So, uh, you know, phoning it in doesn't, doesn't cut it when it comes to credibility, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Chris, hopefully I've, I've set you up some, with some good raw material here to, uh, to, to kind of work with here. So I'm going to turn this over to Chris, who's been listening and taking notes. And uh, I'm going to plug in my computer that's warning me that the, my battery is about to go dead so that I don't disappear from the screen in, in mid-sentence. Uh, Chris, save me. <laughs> yeah. I was going to make a joke and say, no, you didn't do anything. You know, you've been slacking off today. But, you know, I mean, it would have been really fun if your computer would have died. If I suddenly just really, vanished. <laughs> I could have really made that joke. Yeah. Um, but first of all, you know, once again, great episode for those of you who've made it this far. Sit and listen to me drone for a while longer and you'll get to the you'll get to the good part of Dawn's episode. Um, you know, the the interesting thing, Dawn, and I was talking with another client about this yesterday, and, and you fit so well into this mold where it's somebody who um, is an action taker. And granted, you went through all the rough times. You went through the struggle, the strife, you went through the down times, the dark times, but then you took action 
on the on the other side of it and so many people have great ideas so many people have these things that they want to do but they never take action on them. so many people have been given the perfect story and the perfect thing to talk about yet they never take action on it. And they still they they you know lie in the in the victim mode I think it wasn't it Victor Frankel who talked about being a victim or a victor that that sort of thing I think yep. I think that was and I that's love the, it. Yeah, and that's and that's the and that's the main and that's the main point. Um, so that was great. And the other thing that I really got from that before we get into a little bit more of a conversation, um, I loved how you talked about that you knew you wanted to write a book. And Mark, did you notice what Dawn didn't say? She didn't say I'm going to be the leading authority on whistleblowing. She didn't right. <laughs> say I'm going to be. She said I knew I wanted to share this story. And it's so interesting to, to me to, to watch people. When you look at successful people, nine times out of 10, successful people are the ones that are out doing what they know they should be doing, doing what they love, and hadn't <clears throat> thought about the fame or hadn't thought before about becoming that, you know, the really hadn't thought about becoming the authority and aren't doing it to become the authority, but they're mm -hmm. doing it because they love to do it. And those are the people we love to have on the show and that we love to work with, which is the people who are doing what they love, are really good at what they love, but then realize that, okay, you know, now I'm not doing all of that, that setting myself up as an authority is going to be, you know, by writing a book is, is a good thing. So I applaud you on that, Dawn, that you went in with it and said, you know, I'm not really looking, I, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to be the authority i don't know what's going to happen but i know i need to write this book so um it, did, did i get that right was that your thought process through that uh, you, oh gosh you touched my heart <laughs> when you said that yeah you really touched my heart because you know i grew up um with a humanitarian family and our family was always you know uh, advocates for the underdogs and for good causes and i you know, I got it honestly and naturally, and, you know, I never thought about, I want to make a lot of money from this. I just thought, who can I help? Who can I serve? And I, you know, I just need to get over my fear and my insecurity about, you know, just tell it like it is that, you know, two years of what I went through put me in the mental health ward because, um, the people that resonate with me today are people that have been, you know, harmed, sexually abused, uh, workplace bullying. Um, so those are the people that truly resonate with me. And since I've been through it myself, these people see me, you know, that, you know, I'm no one special. <laughs> you know, I'm just, you know, somebody that very strong will and a very strong person. But, you know, they see me and they're like, well, geez, you know, Dawn can get through it. Maybe I can get through it. And and that's what the book is about. It's more about helping people than, you know, oh, let's make millions of dollars, which that would be cool, though, because then I would take it and I would um, you know, really go farther with my nonprofit helping people more. Yeah, but, it, it, you know, it's also interesting to, you know, to hear you talk, you know, you came from, you know, one of the things I want everybody to pick up on is Dawn came from a family of humanitarians. Now, just because you, if you don't, if you're watching this and you don't, it doesn't mean you can't turn into one because her family at some point in the line had to turn into humanitarians. It might have been <laughs> her parents or grandparents. It could have been 17 generations back, but at some point yeah. th there was a point before being that way and there's a point after so you can make the decision to choose you know when you want to make that you know that choice and that and and you know and change um now don i'm going to ask you a question if you don't want to answer it that's fine a lot of, i was going to say a lot of people who talk like this um a lot of uh, a lot of people think well you've got to be independently wealthy to be able to go follow your dream or be able just to do what you want and kind of let things come together so you went through everything with the veterans affairs you were in the air force and trust me from having a having a cousin in the military i know you weren't getting paid a lot uh, you know i got a cousin in the army so i you know i you know i, I know you weren't but you know i mean were you in a position financially where you could just basically say hey i don't really care what i'm doing i'm just going to kind of you know, i'm going to go fight these people i'm going to go i'm going to go write a book i'm going to just do what i want were you were you independently wealthy before you did that or were you you know like you know um in a different state you know, I was in a different state because I was look, living in a, a real nice big house in a very nice neighborhood and, you know, by myself, I'm single. And, uh, you know, so I had to make a certain amount of money. And when the, 
VA management just to punish me, cut off my paycheck, you know, my my credit went south because, you know, I went through so uh, much money to, you know, afford my attorney and you know, just to stay on my feet. But, um, you know, it just fueled me to, um, to stay with it. And I remember, gosh, for months eating beans or rice, whatever, and I mean, getting creative. And that, that was a gift, learning how to be creative in the kitchen and such, but, you know. But, you know, my attorney even said that he's, I never met anybody like you that would hold somebody accountable and go, you know, go through what you went through for two years. So, you know, I, I, you know, I could have quit. I could have moved on. I could have gone somewhere else, you know. I could have, you know, um, you know, changed my, my home right away. But, you know, I fought it out, fought it out. I didn't know that they would cut my paycheck off. And so by then I was, you know, pretty run down, worn out and, yeah, and, and the reason, yeah, and and the reason I bring it up is because there's this misconception that you know people who follow their dreams are these independently wealthy people who can just afford to do this and can afford to just go out and do whatever they want and and have you know unlimited support. And it's always great to have a story on Expert Showcase to say you know what, yeah, it makes it easier, but you know. But it wasn't, you know, but I wasn't like that. You know, I had to sit there and, and fight through and, and everything because, you know, it makes the, uh, I guess, how do they say, something about making the, the reward that much sweeter. You know, the harder you fight, the the, the prize is that much sweeter or something like that. Um I have no clue. I think you know what I'm trying to say. Mark, save me. Do you, do you I, I, I get the concept. I, I don't know what the actual quote is. Okay. I'm terrible remembering quotes. So, you know. I, I, I was hoping there, but... So those are some of the teachable moments I wanted everybody watching to to learn from from Dawn's stories over and above what you're going to learn from the book and what you're going to learn from from the episode. So I want to take a little bit of a different turn, Dawn. In, in preparation for this uh, for this <coughs> recording, you submitted three ways or three questions surrounding video content marketing um, and just video in general, and we want to go over them right now, if that's okay with you, and kind of answer them, talk a little bit about it. Excellent. So the first one was affordable ways to make a video while on a budget. I love that because affordable and budget both, you know, it's kind of the hint there. It's got to be inexpensive, which is which is great. So there's a couple things. First of all, it's doing what we're doing right now. And, and the reason I say that is, is because um, I'm going to let everybody who doesn't know this in on a secret. Mark, can I let him in on the on the full secret? As long as you let me in on the secret. Okay, okay. Well, the, the fact that... <laughs> The fact that, you know, we've got webcams set up, we're using, you know, basically YouTube live streaming. I mean, you know, kind of it, when you do it right, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's other things involved and definitely there's a huge value in, in having a team like us on your side, but we can show you how to do your end of things very inexpensively. So the first oh, thing yeah, would be sure. the affordable way to make a video is get yourself a good um, HD web camera. Uh, we got to get Logitech to sponsor us considering that's all we <laughs> use, but something like the C920 or C930, depending on whether you have a Mac or a PC, they run anywhere between 75 and 150 bucks. The Mac version, I don't know what it is with you Mac people. Everything, even for other more companies, expensive. is more expensive. <laughs> that's um, right. <laughs> and then, you know, and then as far as from a recording standpoint, you know, use, use the power of YouTube and use YouTube live events. Um, you do have to get some other software, uh, but some of it you can get for, for free or for low cost. So you can do it really on a, a limited budget to create videos. Now, mind you, that doesn't include branding and everything and everything else. So when you're talking about just affordable ways you on your own to make a video while on a budget, you can do it simply with, you know, the simplest way, of course, is a, you know, a cell phone. Yeah, and just absolutely. Point. Cell phones are amazing in this day and age. So, yeah. You know, the lowest cost way is whatever cell phone you have. The the next is get a webcam um, with a really good stereo mic. Like I said, the Logitechs are great um, and use YouTube live events. And then the third level is where is where Mark and I come in and to, to provide things like the control room and the branding and everything you see around here. And it all really depends where you make the decision, depends on where you want to go and what you want to do with your with your video. Um, so I've rambled on for a while. Any questions about what I just said or anything I can explain a little bit further for you or for the audience? Oh, I think you did a great job. 
Oh, well, thanks, Mark. We're gonna have to have Dawn back on. She just exactly. She keeps, She's, she keeps you know. feeding my ego. This is great. We're just gonna have her. We'll have her back on as a regular guest. You know. So That's for, right. When I when I hit the skids, it's like, hey, let's just book Dawn. She'll say nice things. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so the second question is an awesome question. Editing mm -hmm. tools you recommend. Um, mm. I'm gonna take a little part of this, and then Mark, I'm gonna throw it to. I'm gonna throw it to you for for your mm -hmm. tool. Um, here's the interesting part. Um, for free, you can use the YouTube. You can use the Creator Studio on YouTube. And yes, I said for free, you can use the Creator Studio on YouTube. It's very limited, um, but it gives you enough editing power that you can move clips around, that you can reorder video, that you can do some simple edits with it. Um, when you're ready to invest in at least a little bit of a paid. My favorite, and, and I'll call it a prosumer, which is kind of a consumer level, but it's a little bit up, um, is actually Corel. And uh, Corel's got Video Studio Ultimate, and it's about 100 bucks. And for me, for a localized thing, I think it's a, it gives you all of what you need for basic video editing and gives you a lot of extra effects. It doesn't allow you all the flexibility is something that Mark is going to talk about um, allows you, and it doesn't um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. But when you want to go from just something that's free that allows you to do small edits to something that allows you to get more involved in it, um, and Corel is also a fairly easy package to learn. Now, Mark, you use something that's even a step up from that when you actually uh, in the past when you've done high level right. video editing, and that well, is, and, I, and I'll, well, I'll get to that in one second. The other thing I'll say is. Anyone who owns a computer has video editing on their system because if you're a PC person, you have Windows Movie Maker. At least I think it's still packaged in there. I haven't in the, in the most recent generations, but at least it, it always used to be a part of the the uh, the bundle you get when you when you get that software. And if you're an Apple person, you have iMovie uh, in there, and you can do a ton of stuff with just that that free software. Uh, I spent the first few years just working with iMovie, and you can create some pretty fancy stuff. The limit you get to pretty quickly, though, is if you want to do anything that's got multiple cameras uh, and multiple camera angles, those both start to, you know, sort of top out on what they can do. Uh, I use uh, Final Cut Pro, which is, uh, you know, a, a really powerful editing suite. Uh, it used to be crazy expensive. It's about 300 bucks now from Apple, uh, and you can have up to 16 cameras. Uh, you know that are simulcast and cut together, and you can do special effects and all kinds of things. I mean, so that's like nuclear power for what most people need. I mean, it, it's it's what you do if you're going to do a full documentary or a you know uh, you could you could do a Hollywood you know style movie basically and with what's in there so there's a broad range but actually if you think about the power that's that's the most you know powerful tool around really and it's only 300 bucks if you think about it so the the prices have come down um, you know as Chris said you can do a lot with just what's built into YouTube and that look that's gonna keep improving because YouTube clearly keeps reinvesting and adding new bells and whistles on what people can do so uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money either on the equipment or on the editing really it does take a while to get good at it though you know so yeah and that's the thing of it so before, so before I ask if there's any questions for the first two things before I go into general benefits you know the biggest thing as we talk to our clients is just like coaching you know, you can spend the time to figure things out or you can hire a coach to get you there quicker. So you can spend the time to figure all this stuff out or you can take advantage of, of the time, you know, of the, you know, and, and Mark, always, Mark always shies away when I say this, but, you know, I think we've, we've calculated in between the, whether it's video or interviewing or everything else, you, you combine it, it's been over 60 years of experience. I know we don't look that old, but I've been on this... I was going to say, I've been on the stage and doing, I, I was video, I was doing video for bands back in the 80s. So there, I've just really dated myself, okay? <laughs> you know, I'm like the Dick, I'm Dick Clark here, baby. Um, but I was doing, you know, I was doing video for bands back in the 80s, building, <laughs> you know, I've been in technology. Literally, I mean, for those of you to, to you know, I remember the big eight inch floppies and when you used to have to put the phone on the coupler to get the modem and you used to sit all night to download an image. And, yeah, I remember those good old days. No, so, thank you. I, so, um, you know, and Mark's been doing interviewing, uh, you know, literally with his practice for 20 plus years and, and the videoing and everything else. So, you know, that's that's where you end up getting. So it's like, can you get the the tools and the, and the, the equipment cheap? Sure. 
but you're going to spend a whole you're going to spend your time your valuable time when you should be doing something else um learning how to edit videos and like coaching to put them together. yeah <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Like like something that actually makes you money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the best time of your money, you know. Ex right. Exactly. Right. Like James like James Malinchek of ABC Secret Millionaire says, Why would I pay somebody if I if I make a hundred dollars an hour, why would I pay somebody why why wouldn't why would I do something? I can spit this out right. I can, I'm I'm a public speaker. I can <laughs> demonstrate. Easy for him to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I make a hundred dollars an hour, why would I do something that I could pay somebody Fifty dollars an hour to do because you know it's it's a waste. Right. Of, it's a right. you know if I'm spending an hour of my time, it's worth a hundred dollars, and if I can pay somebody fifty, you know, or two hundred or whatever whatever the case may be. So for the first two questions, for the first two things, any questions or anything you want us to go into any any further with you? No, Chris, you've got it covered pretty well. Okay, <laughs> cool. So the last one, this this is right in our wheelhouse. This is a softball. This is you know, we couldn't ask for a better question. General benefits of having a video. Would you know? Okay, so do you have seventeen hours? No, I'm just kidding. We will not go on that long. <laughs> the biggest benefit for having a video, and I'm going to speak directly to you, Dawn, is your smile, your personality, your energy. Yeah. That's the biggest benefit for you to be on video. Um, because people can see that, they can connect with it, they can identify it. Mark, as you like to say, you know, if a picture's worth a thousand words, um, and there are 30, 30 frames a second, man. <laughs> and there are 30 frames in each second, which means there are 30 pictures in every second of video. That means there are 30, what, 30,000 words in every second of video. Exactly. It's, you know, it goes exponentially. You can't speak that fast. And people get a chance to, you know, they, they, um, they quote unquote, you know, as a coach, they'll, you know, they, they enjoy, um, like I said, connecting with the energy. They, you know, get enamored with the smile or the, or the, the actions, the motions, the facial expressions. And that's where they, and that's where they connect with you. It, interesting enough, it's one of the reasons why you're going to Congress and speaking in front of them versus having somebody there reading a statement from you mm -hmm. because it's right. going to be much more powerful for them to see you in person and be there to see how you're saying it versus the you know versus just the bland you know I'm reading from a prepared statement or this is what um, you know this is what somebody else said so that's the uh, that is the biggest benefit of having the video and while we can't guarantee it what we've seen in our experience is it helps you identify attract and really get with your ideal client in a much quicker level just like coaching helps you get through your blocks quicker you know having videos helps you attract and solidify the next client the next the next big gig quicker than with than without it you know we've also had some people and i'm going to and, and mark i'm going to throw it to you for for some of your general benefits we've had other clients report to us that would it really help them do and i know this doesn't apply <laughs> to you dawn because you've got your message all you know all laid out and you're really comfortable with it but for those coaches watching who aren't comfortable we've had other clients report to us that when they did the video and by doing it and talking about it it helped them Eat, uh, refine their message quicker. It helped them yeah. get to their core message quicker, and help them talk about their core message, you know, without stumbling over it, um, because they got they just got used to saying and talking about you know the core message and the core problems and everything else that their clients were experiencing. Uh, Mark, what, what do you got? What do you got to add to that? Well, you know, I, I don't think there's ever ever going to be a substitute for physically being in a room with somebody again. As Chris said, that's why you're going up to Washington to Congress to, to deliver a message. There's an energy to being in a room with somebody. But the next best thing, um, and in some ways and with a whole lot of extra benefits, is video because people can see a lot more information than just the words. They can see the look in your eyes, the facial expression, uh, whether you look passionate about your subject or not, right? We, we read so much out of people's facial expressions, so that's the, the real power of video. Can people do that in the written word? Yeah, but they gotta be darn good authors to, to be able to really make you feel uh, the passion through the words as opposed to actually seeing the passion on somebody's face. The other humongous benefit of video is just about reach, right? There's only so many rooms we can be in uh, physically over time, but your video can be propagated out to literally millions 
of potential viewers uh, with the push of a button. So reach is just incredible. And of course, we now live in the age of social media. So reach is such a powerful thing because if you've got a thousand followers on Facebook and each of those thousand followers has a thousand followers and each of those, you know, you get my point. If you, if you can deliver a passionate, powerful message like you do, Dawn, I mean, you've got a, a really powerful message that comes from a really powerful place, but you can't reach all those people. Uh, but the people you can reach can reach more, can reach more, can reach more. And so that, that concept of virality is just a, an amazing feature of, of the Internet. So so those are my two cents. <laughs> you nailed it, Mark. You know, it's, it's all about energy. And people pick up that energy in either a photo or a video, and it just tells so much about a person. You nailed it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, and that's what, and that's why, that's why that media is out there, and that's why you're you're watching Facebook and Twitter, really scrambling to catch up with with YouTube, and and really get this media rich stuff built into their platforms. So, we all benefit from that, uh, and they, they're doing it because we want it, and and it's what the consumer wants. So, thanks. And, and before I close and ask Dawn if you've got any questions for me, before I throw it back to Mark. Speaking of scrambling, Mark, did you see the story about Facebook? It was came out a couple days ago that they're now getting something like three billion views a day on videos. Mm. Speaking of, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to I didn't insane. see it, but I'm certainly not surprised. Yeah. I mean. Well, and if you think about the short form video and everything else, but yeah, I mean, and they're now predicting, and this is just kind of for all you video, for all you folks like us and video content marketers, they're, they're now predicting that, that, that video might be Facebook's long-awaited cash cow, meaning that they've always <laughs> said that Facebook was going to be free forever, but they've already started charging for ads and for other things. And now that YouTube is going with a subscription service later in the year where you can pay to not see ads. Um, so keep it, keep a, a very good. It's one of the reasons why, once again, one of the reasons why you hire a coach, one of the reasons why you partner with somebody like us, because we're on top of all of that uh, to keep to keep our clients in the forefront. Front. Um, but for those of you who are doing it on your own, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on what Facebook is doing with video because, um, you know, it might be what keeps them relevant a lot longer than uh, it might be A, their next cash cow, and B, what keeps them relevant a whole lot longer and puts them back in the spotlight for businesses and other, um, you know, other markets. So, uh, Dawn, before I throw this back to Mark, was there any questions for me today? Yeah, you know, Chris, I've always heard to keep the video no more than one to two minutes. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, well I can't talk for Chris, 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 how many minutes have we been on this video right now? <laughs> um, I think we're in big trouble. <laughs> well, it's a great, so first of all, Dawn, excellent question to, to start <laughs> off with, to start <laughs> off with, to let you know where our head is at. I don't think we ever released it, but we actually have a a what is it mark a two minute video to preview the 15 minute video that was supposed right. to be a two minute intro right yeah, exactly so, right. Um, we had to we had to do an intro to our intro because you know yeah, hey. it, it, it was <laughs> it was kind of comical so here's the bottom line um and it ain't even because stone cold says so see i got the rock reference in now i gotta go stone cold you know what and you got the you got the bald hair you gotta wear the jacket next time we'll get you all right all right season. the, <laughs> the short <laughs> <laughs> the short version, the bottom line is your length of video needs to match your ideal client. If you have a busy professional who only has a couple of minutes and is in and out watching quick videos, it needs to be right to the point. It needs to be boom, boom, boom. Here's what I'm going to tell you, tell you yeah. and move on. If you have a more, I'll call it an ethereal client. If you have a more touchy feel, if you have a more, um, you know, a more, how can I, I'm trying to think of the right exact words to say, but a more feeling based client that wants the stories, that wants all the backstory, that wants to hear the talking, that wants to hear, if you have a client like that, then you gotta give it to them and you gotta give them the five, 10, 15 minute video because if not, they're not gonna resonate with you. So the perfect length of a video is the marriage between what you do best and what your client wants and that, you know, that resonance factor to where, you know, as you can tell, I'm a talker, Mark's a talker. So we tend to attract people either on the show or our clients who are in the same, you know, are in the same boat or at least can deal with us. Right, Mark? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can put, can put up with us. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, well, and, and my two cents on that, I guess, is just that, you know, the video needs to be as long or as short as it takes to to really deliver what it's about, right? I mean, you know, and and 
there's no need to, to feel like there's a rule to that. I mean, and ideally you want to create multiple length bits of content because, you know, you, in part the content will find its audience and the audience will find the content. So you can use 60 second clips to attract people to 10 minute videos and you can, you know, look, we all, we all go to the movies, right? We're willing to sit for, for a long time if, if the movie has the entertainment value or the documentary is really teaching me something powerful. Uh, so our attention span has to be earned, and so the the value of your content is what you earn that with. So, yep. I, I tell you, you guys surprised me on that one. I just always heard <laughs> one to two minutes, and I everybody mean, likes a rule, you know. I mean, we all like rules, you know. Is, there, there, there are people, Don, who still swear that if they buy their airline ticket on Tuesday, they're going to get the best deal, even though there's absolutely no truth to it. So, you know, we like rules, you know, and we hold on to them dearly. <laughs> and and Don, you were. And Don, you were saying you, you mentioned that you that you, we surprised you. And you were you were saying something else. What was that? Yeah, I, I didn't expect you to tell me that. I kind of <laughs> expect you to tell me kind of keep it shorter. And uh, yeah, so it was a really nice educational experience for me to hear that. Cool. And it's you know, um, and and hopefully for you and for other people, it's also refreshing because yeah, there is a lot of. There's a lot of pund I'll call them pundits out there. They're pontificating, right, Mark? <laughs> um, about the one to two minute video, and just yeah. and it's just, let's let's face it. Let's you know throw all the cards on the table and be fully transparent. Coaches like us will talk about needing a coach. If you're not in the coaching industry, you're going to say coaching is bunk and 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 it and it's useless if you haven't experienced it because that's just what you do because that's you know you don't believe in it but if you're a coach and you've experienced it you say okay the coaching is beneficial it's the same way with creating a video people who are out saying one to two minute videos are the way to go are the people who are creating one to two minute videos and are having success with it and they might not have had success with five or ten minute videos they're also mm -hmm. looking at the data that says people quote people in quotes only, in quotes, watch a video for one to two minutes. Well, the reason that, that there's this generalized statistic about people only watching a video one to two minutes is because there are billions of videos and people are watching multiple exactly. videos, but they're yeah. not. So you can't hone in on that one great video that you will sit and watch for an hour. You know, so it's it got it skews. So in other words, the um, it's it's almost like they're t they're taking the middle of the bell curve. But you, where you really should be looking at the outliers, because the outliers are where your customers probably lie. You know, your 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 outliers at thirty second video, and they really want to get it done, or the you know the hour long video, and they just want to you know they just want to kind of hang out. Sure. No. And, and, and think about it. It's the same as, as as the written word, right? I mean, the, if you're writing a book, right? I mean, what what do we, the majority of people who are let's say in a physical bookstore are going to pick up the book and read a paragraph? Now, an awful lot of people are going to read the paragraph and put the book down. Does that mean the book sucks? No. It means that that person is not looking for the information in that book. And so, yes, if, you look, if you're a statistics-driven person and you pull up a video and look at the, the views, the, you know, a huge number of people will drop off your video in the first you know, 30 to 60 seconds. But that's because they've understood that this is not their video, right? I mean, so what you if everyone does, okay, let's let's go back to the drawing board. But if if you're getting people to get to your call to action, um, you know, and they're the right people, then you don't care that the majority of people aren't looking past the first 30 seconds because they aren't they aren't your people. They aren't the people that are going to um, so anyway, I think we've beaten this one to death, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do want to throw one last real quick thing in, and this will be short. The, the length of the video and keeping people attracted is the reason we came up with the systems that we use in the background. It's the reason you see Mark introduce every one of these episodes. It's the reason, it's the reason that if you look at our client episodes, all of our client episodes start off with a six second call to action, a 15 second summary of what they're going to find, and the three bullet points of what they're going to they're gonna learn in the video. Because what we what we know is that if we can capture their attention within the first minute, and it's something they want to watch, they will watch the rest of the video. And we also know that if we tell them in the first minute what the video is about, and it doesn't meet their needs, but they like the people they see on screen, they're more willing to come back and give you a second, a third, a fourth, or a fifth chance to see if the next video is something they want to hear about, because you haven't wasted their time. 
So that becomes the key, and that becomes the key to the systems that we use that you experience here through Expert Showcase and through our client work. You guys do great work. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. So, Mark, I'm going to throw on that note. I'm going to throw it back up to you to kind of get final thoughts before I uh, wrap right. this up and roll the. Yeah, day. we're 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 gonna we got to wrap up at this point. Otherwise, we, you know, we'll be here for a marathon uh, all day long. And so, uh, I, you know, I'm glad you've been enjoying. Uh, we we've been certainly enjoying having you on, Dawn. I think you have a, a powerful story. I'm glad you're heading up to uh, to DC. I know that. Uh, we still have a long way to go before we make the world safe for whistleblowers to uh, to do what you have gone through. Uh, so I hope you can change that culture in in the part that you're doing and with the book that's coming out and uh, and one on one with the coaching clients that you work with. Uh, but you know, hopefully you're you're going to do both. You're going to have the the one on one impact and the broader impact because uh, it's it's needed. And you've got the story that that helps do that. But any closing thoughts uh, before we have Chris wrap it up and show people your episode? <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's a quote I just love. It's called, you know, you have to believe in yourself more than others believe in yourself, you know, in you. Um, if you don't believe in yourself, that's where people get stuck in their life. That's where they become leaders in hiding and they're held hostage by their ego. You know, you have to believe in yourself more than others believe in you. And if anybody could just believe that and follow through, they're going to see how far they go in life. It's amazing. Excellent. Appreciate it. Yeah, Chris, wrap us up. Get us to uh, get us to the tape. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the the non-existent digital tape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So first, first and foremost, thank you all for sticking around and listening to us drone on about video content marketing. We hope we we know, we, we hope you enjoyed it as much as we. we hope you had as much fun as we did. As you can tell, we're all laughing. Um, stick around. Dawn created a great episode. You're going to find out more about being more about the empower whistle the empowered whistleblower and more about how to stop giving away your power. And that's very key in the in these tro troubling and trying times. If you're a coach or consultant. And like what you've seen on Expert Showcase, which if you made it this far, we kind of believe you did, head on over to Expert Showcase, hit the apply button, send us your information, we'll take a look at it. And if we feel you're a good fit to be on Expert Showcase, we'll get in contact with you, we'll bring you on the show. Now regularly when we create an episode like this, we just do a one-off, it'd be like 375 bucks. But you know what, what the heck, we'll give it to you for free. We'll get, we'll get you on to Expert Showcase and give you a, a, you know, a free piece of video content marketing. And finally, for those coaches and consultants who realize the power of video is is what, you, is what you need to build visibility, credibility, and authority. Head on over to videocontent.agency. Uh, go to the services tab. Check out the visibility, credibility, and authority projects. Pick which one's right for you. Get in contact with us. Let's start talking and see if we're a good fit to work together and uh, see if we're the ones to produce your internet talk show. And now without any further ado, I'm going to roll the tape. Today on Expert Showcase, Dawn Westmoreland, author of The Empowered Whistleblower, and she's going to challenge you to stop giving away your personal power. Dawn Westmoreland, welcome to Expert Showcase. We're so glad to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Mark. Doing great in Asheville, North Carolina. Well, I, as we were saying before the show, I got to get down there and visit sometime. So, so Don, uh, give us a, just a quick overview of where we're going in this episode, just so that we get everyone's brains in alignment here. Well, where we going is into personal power and how people give away their personal power, and it's all about empowerment. Excellent. Okay, and we're gonna we like to do things in threes, Don, and so we're gonna give people three main takeaways here. We're gonna talk a little bit about keep your power. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about explore coaching, and then we're gonna talk about pain and suffering being optional. So okay. let's uh, let's take that from the top here. So keeping your power. T tell me a little bit about what you talk about there, uh, and what you do with the people you work with around this theme. Well, I talk about giving away your personal power because, you know, that's something I did most of my life was give away my personal power. And I'll give you a good example of it. For example, uh, people that are constantly seeking validation from other people or asking, you know, for advice on everything, that's a, that's a, a way of giving away your personal power because, you know, the bottom line mark is the power is in you, the personal power is you, and all the answers are in you, and you just have to believe in yourself more than others believe in you. 
Absolutely, I, I love it, and uh, yeah, this is kind of an, an insecurity when you're constantly looking for external validation, right? Exactly, and people pick up on that. It's all energy. Right, right. You're, you're essentially teaching people that you're not the expert when you do that, right? I mean, right. <laughs> so keeping your personal power, uh, obviously, a critical part of of you know empowering yourself. Um, let's talk a little bit about coaching. I mean, um, obviously, you're in the coaching field. Um, what do you see as the value of coaching? And uh, you know, it should be fairly obvious to most of our our audience, but uh, but let's go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, I always say you can't afford not to have coaching. You know, if you have a block in your life, or you know, you feel like you're a leader in hiding. A lot of times, you hear people talk about, "Well, I can't afford it," or they assume it's expensive. But you know, if the issues that are going on in that person's life you know, are going to cost them more than coaching, they, they really should start thinking about the benefits of coaching and, you know, figure out ways to come up with the money for coaching if they don't have it. Because coaching can help you, you know, to empower you, to help you break through the blocks and, you know, to get to your goals and your aspirations. So you cannot afford not to have coaching is my thing. Well, I, I love the way you're saying that because, I mean, th there is this mental block, right, because if I'm sitting at home or in my office or whatever, the idea of hiring a coach, my mind kind of pulls a fast one on me, right? Because I have to outlay money that's obvious to me to hire any kind of professional, whether it's you know a coach or, or someone to come and remodel my kitchen. But if what I'm not seeing is what it's costing me in terms of not being productive, not being focused, not not having a target that I'm going after, but because I don't see the dollar signs in front of my face, I think that the coaching is expensive because I'm not seeing what I'm losing by not having the, that investment make me more successful, right? Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll talk to potential clients and there's, they'll tell me, well, you know, they're not ready for coaching, they don't have the money yet, and then I'll check back with them, you know, in a few months and ask them, well, how are things are going? <laughs> and, and more times than not, you know, they're in the same predicament, the same situation. There's still that leader in hiding. They're still, you know, being held small. Their ego's still in the way. And I'm like, well, what is this costing you? Right. P people spend a lot of time preparing to launch, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I talk about, you know, uh, what's important to you. I mean, I spent $25,000 on myself on coaching last year. And, and it really paid off, and I had to adjust, you know, things in my budget to make it happen. But it was, it was absolutely worth it. And it's, it's not that hard to be able to afford coaching if, if there are issues. Because first of all, a lot of times we hold on to things that we don't need. We can sell them. We really, you know, there's so many ways to find the money for coaching if that ever is a question mm -hmm. or an issue. Yeah. yeah, it really is a matter of trying to understand the value because, you know, we, we're, we all make value choices, right? The same person who says, I can't afford coaching, <laughs> three weeks later might invest, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on on their kitchen remodel or bath remodel because, you know, so it's not that they lack the money, it's that they probably lack the ability to put two and two together about wh how this is going to get me to a different place in my life where I'm going to get lots of return on that investment. Um, yeah, they have to see the value in it, first of all. Yeah. Yeah, in anything, right? I mean, none, none of us wants to part with money for something that does not seem valuable to us. And when we don't understand, we tend to say no, right? Uh, that's an yeah. old saying, right? The confused mind always says no. But uh, So let's talk a little bit about pain and suffering. I love this line because it's one that I passionately believe as well. Um, you know, pain and suffering are optional. Uh, what, what are you talking about here? Well, you know, we get to choose our thoughts, and our thoughts form our belief system, as you know. And so, you know, we can think that we're victims in our life because, you know, we all have different stories. We all have different challenges. But, you know, I turn around and say, it's not a challenge. It's an opportunity. And, you know, what you consider pain or uh, suffering could also be a gift in ugly wrapping paper. And just realizing that something is making you miserable, uncomfortable, might be what it takes to get you to move forward in the direction you need to. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've had a lot of uncomfortability in my life. And it really pushed me forward to, you know, to take the steps that I needed to transform my life. So it was a gift and ugly wrapping paper. But, you know, uh, you know, I, pain and suffering is optional because it's really how you reframe your thoughts. 
Yeah, and th and there's different qualities of pain, right? I mean, it's like if I if I want to get in shape and and start hitting the gym, I'm going to be sore, right? But but because it's it's pain in service of I increased health, I, I don't frame it the same way. I don't see it as a negative. I see it as evidence of the positive that I'm I'm growing. I'm I'm building muscle mass, you know, right? Uh, so it's kind of like that, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if you go to the gym one time, you might feel good and you're all pumped up, but you keep going to the gym and boy, you come back, you're all fit, trim, muscles, if that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, you have to work on yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, you know, in, in my own world, I, I, sort of, I sort of separate them a little bit. I, my, my way of phrasing it is that p pain is, is the part that is just part of life, but suffering is the part that's optional because that's completely mental. That's the that's the definition you're putting on why I'm in pain or what this pain means. And that's why I say, I mean, if, if the pain is a growing pain, then of course I don't suffer. I, I value it because it, sh it shows me that I'm changing. But if, if I'm seeing that pain as a negative, then it becomes a suffering. It becomes, I, I don't want this to be happening and I, and I just get stuck in that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Our emotions can be action takers, you know. If it makes us uncomfortable, you know, or we're in pain, it's like, okay, what action can I take to get out of this emotion and and to be in alignment with who I'm supposed to be on this earth? Yeah. Excellent. Well, Dawn, you've got a book coming out very, very shortly here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the book. Yeah, well, it's called The Empowered Whistleblower, and it's a practical and spiritual path uh, to personal freedom. And it's my journey, uh, talking from my childhood of um, being disempowered, um, going through childhood molestation, and you know, adult, uh, young um, childhood bullying. Um, you know, being in an alcoholic marriage. Just, it's all about attracting these negative things in my life, all because I was disempowered and I had low self-esteem and I felt, uh, you know, again, you know, very disempowered. And it takes it up to the time uh, three years ago when I was a whistleblower in the Veteran Affairs and I blew the whistle on prohibited personnel practices. My background is in HR. And then I went through two years of horrific bullying that landed me in the mental health ward for three days. And so, you know, the book talks about everything that happened to me. And it was pretty uh, lengthy, all the different things that happened to me. But, you know, it was really a gift. It was a gift, again, in the ugly wrapping paper. Right. Because it was that third day in the mental health ward. I'm like, this is, uh, this is crazy. You know, this is not who I am. And I'm more of a bully to myself than anybody's ever been to me. And then, you know, I checked myself out and, you know, worked on my inner self and got my act together. And then, boom, I'm, you know, out there writing a book on radio shows, uh, doing magazine interviews, coaching, went to coaching school on Wayne Dyer's um, show, not his show, his um, his stage uh, last year in Fort Lauderdale, writing from the soul. I got called up to talk. So, yeah, that's what it's all about. Ugly wrapping yeah. paper, accept the gift and uh, and run with it. Well, you know, the, the School of Hard Knocks is a tough teacher, but a powerful teacher, and so uh, your your coaching is coming from from a personal journey that has a lot of depth and, and overcoming a lot of, of uh, stuff. It sounds like it's uh, going to be a powerful book. So let me just recap real quick here. So we, we've been talking with Don Westmoreland, who is uh, really talking about not giving away your personal power and, and the cost of uh, to your life of, of doing that. And we talked about three things. We talked about the importance of keeping your personal power, the importance of really understanding the value of coaching and exploring what coaching can do for you in your life, and then really understanding that pain and suffering are optional. They're, they're, they're a mind game, essentially, and that uh, your attitude has an awful lot to do with what you do with that. So if you find that you're resonating with, uh, with Dawn's message here, if you're intrigued by the book that she was just talking about, here's what you should uh, do. Her book, The Empowered Whistleblower, is coming out very shortly, and you can go to the website, theempoweredwhistleblower.com. Funny how the site and the book have the same name there, Dawn. That's very clever. <laughs> It's easy to remember. So head on over to theempoweredwhistleblower.com. Get connected with Dawn Westmoreland. Get the book, um, you know, and uh, explore whether Dawn is uh, is somebody that's going to really help you out as well because she certainly got a powerful story. So Dawn, it's been great having you today on Expert Showcase. Uh, hope you've enjoyed being here. I have. Thank you so much, Mark. And another great Expert Showcase episode, Chris. What should people do right now? 
Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Experts Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral, and we give you a a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your, your business. So what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow apply button and apply to be our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. Now if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you, then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said. <laughs>